everybody welcome to my channel my name's Mel thank you so much for joining me today for the booktube giving tag so the booktube giving tag was a tag that was created by Elliot Brooks I'm sure that most people here on booktube have heard of Elliot Brooks but I will link her channel in the description below so you can go and subscribe if you haven't already so the idea behind the booktube giving tag is that it's Christmas time and traditionally Christmas time is a time for giving. Because of that, every question has the word give or giving in it and we're thinking about different aspects of giving and what that means. But we're also highlighting charities and giving to charities and helping out because Christmas isn't always a great time for a lot of different people. It can be really difficult, really tough, especially those people who don't have very much resources. So what Elliot does every single year since she created this tag, I'm not sure when but a few years ago now, is that she highlights a different charity, gives you ways that you could go ahead and help out that charity. This year she's focusing on food because food is something that people sometimes struggle to have access to for various different reasons and particularly at this time of year when we are so focused on Christmas dinner and having a big family get together and eating and all of that sort of thing. It's a good time to think about those people who are less fortunate than ourselves and give back to the community by way of different food charities. So I will actually link all of the information for the charity that Elliot herself is actually focusing on in her video so that if you are in the United States, you can go ahead and donate to that charity in a number of different ways. I think if you are from other parts of the world, you can still go ahead and donate to that charity. But if you're in the US, then you can volunteer and different things as well as donating money. I will also link the information for a very similar charity here in Australia and that charity is Food Bank. So this is a charity that is focused on getting food to people in need. So in various different parts of Australia they have locations where you can go in and get access to food. Um, this is food that has been provided by different supermarkets and different businesses that have access. So you can go in and get some of that food. It's also provided for other organizations like community groups child and family centers different places like that that can go and get a bunch of food and take it to their center where they have community members that come in and access different services so there's a variety of different ways that people can access help through food bank there's also a variety of different ways that you can help food bank and give back to the community so you can donate food you can donate money but you can also volunteer and I will link Food Bank's website in the description below. So if you're Australian or from anywhere else in the world, but I thought it was particularly important, given that I am Australian, to highlight something that is local as well as highlighting something in the United States. So if you are local, consider giving to Food Bank in some form or other this Christmas as well. Anyway, let's get on with the tag, shall we? Okay, so question number one is what is a book that you would give to everyone if you could? I actually have two answers to this question. The first one is White Rage by Carol Anderson. I read this a couple of years ago now actually and I feel like I am very much due a reread. This book is really really good. It's quite confronting in a lot of ways but it's really important as a read when you are trying to educate yourself, become a better ally. So White Rage looks at the way that white people respond to when they're called out and when they are told that things that they're doing is racist in any way um, and how White Rage is an impediment to us moving forward in the fight against racism and the fight to change our systems and make them less racist because white the white response is often and it's not to say everyone does this all the time but the white response is to say oh no but we've given you all these things or I personally know all of these black people or whatever it might be so therefore I couldn't possibly be racist and the accusation of racism is the thing that makes us angry and therefore is in and of itself not the accusation but our response to it is in and of itself an impediment to anything improving. I found it really really confronting. There were some things in there that I was 
like many of us, I'm sure, like to think of ourselves as fairly woke, as being decent allies, as being aware of stuff. And there was things, there were things in the book that I was confronted by because I realized that I am maybe not as woke as I thought I was and that there are some things that I still do or believe. And again, I think that it's important because you can be a well-intentioned, well-educated, white person but your experience will never be black so you will never understand what it is to be black in this world it was particularly framed around america but it fits in with other places in the world particularly here in australia and so our rage against saying that we are racist and that the system is racist is in and of itself racist because it doesn't allow for anything to change um and it means that People of colour don't feel like they can question or attempt to change anything because we are going to just get all upset. Um, so it's a really important read, very confronting, but I think definitely, definitely worth a read and I think everyone should read it. So that is a book that I would give to everyone if I could. On a somewhat lighter vein, but actually still fitting in with the general topic that I was talking about with White Rage, I would give everyone, if I could, Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston. This is a middle grade, fantastical, fun, whimsical book where we follow Amari, who is a young black girl I think she's around sort of 11 or 12 who lives in the States I think Detroit potentially but I'm not 100% sure her brother goes missing and then I think like 11 months later or something like that it's sometime later Amari finds out why um, and also discovers that there is a magical world hidden behind the veil of secrecy but it exists within our world and things like um, the abominable snowman and things like witches and magic magicians and different things like that exist and so she enrolls in this kind of not really a school but she she enrolls herself in this competition to try and get a place in this sort of ministry of magic I can't remember what it's actually called so I think this book was really fun I really really enjoyed it but also I think it's actually a really really important book partly because Amari is black and the author is black and so it's an own voices conversation around different ways around how being black in America affects people and children but also it takes a different lens to that kind of magical school magical competition being a child finding out magic exists it takes a different lens to that which I think is really fun but also really really important and of course also in some ways it's quite similar to Harry Potter but the author is not a turf so it's a book that we can read to our children, give to our children, that doesn't have the problematic elements of some of the stuff that's actually in Harry Potter, if you look at it with a different lens, but also because of who and what the author is. Um, so I think that, yeah, it's just a really great alternative to that style of book. But also it's really, really fun and I think that people would really, really enjoy it. So those are my answers to question number one. The next question is, what is a book that you could not give a rat's hiney about? That's careful YouTube speak, but basically a book that you can give a crap about, to put it in Australian ease. <laughs> so... There's a number of books that I could talk about in this section, but I've actually gone with one specific book, and that is Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. If you don't know what this book is, I would be very surprised because at the very beginning of this year, or at the end of last year, it was all the rage, it had just come out, and everyone was talking about it. It is a retelling of Twilight. I'm not 100% sure whether it's a retelling of the entire four book um, quartet of the Twilight series or just the first book Twilight but either way it is a retelling from Edward's point of view. Now I didn't, I had a little bit, I don't have the best relationship with Twilight <laughs> um, and the reason I'm hesitating in the way that I say that is not because I'm worried that people won't like that answer because I mean maybe you don't like that answer and if Twilight and Midnight Sun is some of your favorite books then you know that's fine that's your opinion you're entitled to that opinion I hope that you think that I'm entitled to my opinion also but if not then I'm sorry if I've offended you but it doesn't change anything but anyway the actual reason why I'm hesitating is because 
I read Twilight when I was in my mid 20s and I didn't hate it. I had a good time reading it but I was very aware that it was extremely problematic and even as I was reading the series I was having conversations with people who had nostalgic view because they read it when they were in their teens about how I personally didn't think it was romantic or really good <laughs> but there are problematic elements in that book which I really struggled with and that I have some quite significant problems with. It is a book that they are, they are a series of books that I I would never say I would not let a child read because or a teenager read because I think that it's important for them to make up their own minds about things but I definitely think that it's a book that were I to introduce to any chil children or teenagers I would have some conversations around the book itself and you know what's actually going on in the book. Anyway yeah, I have some problematic things about Twilight and one of the main things that I have a problem with is Edward himself. I find him incredibly creepy. I find the whole concept of, I mean, first of all, <laughs> the concept of a 200 odd year vampire having a relationship with a teenager while it's not original to Twilight in any way and in fact Buffy one of my favorite tv shows of all time has that in it so it's not to say that it's just Twilight being problematic about that but that in and of itself is a little bit dodgy but then Edward's character throughout the entire series is really dodgy he's incredibly controlling he is just the way he talks about his feelings for Bella is very problematic um so I have a big problem with Edward. So to read a book from his point of view is just a big no-no to me. I, I find him a creep. I do not like him. I don't like the way he behaves, the way he thinks, his controllingness. I don't like Edward. So I really don't want to read a book from his perspective. I know that people have said that it gives you a new light into different things that were going on and different perspectives from other people because because of Edward's specific power where he can read thoughts he can then tell you what other people were thinking but that in and of itself is kind of creepy anyway <laughs> but I just didn't like Twilight enough to put to get over the fact that I hate Edward to then want to read other people's thoughts so yeah Midnight Sun is basically the answer to that question. The next question is, given that the holidays are coming up, what is a book that you hope that someone will give to you? I just want to preface my answer to say that I do not expect that anyone would give me presents and I very much appreciate when and if they do. The book that I have in mind for this question is probably pretty ex Expensive. I haven't actually looked at the Australian release of it or cost of it but anyway it is this amazing new edition of the Lord of the Rings. I will put some images of it up here. It's just absolutely stunning. It has some original drawings from Tolkien himself. I believe it has some other uh, added extras as well and it's just yeah like I said it's just absolutely beautiful I have seen other people on booktube who have copies of this book they look amazing and the people are very happy to have them so this is a, a book that I would absolutely love to be given like I said it is not a book that I would anticipate anyone giving to me I don't even know if it's a book that I'm going to buy for myself perhaps I will I'm not sure but it's certainly not a book that I would anticipate being gifted but it is a book that for the purpose of this question, if I were to make one wish of one thing that someone could give me for a present, it would be that. The next question is, what is a book or series that you have given up on? So, again, I'm probably not making any friends with the answer to this question, but my answer is the Shadow and Bone series by Lee Bardugo. I just mean the Shadow and Bone trilogy, so Shadow and Bone, I think it then goes Ruin and Rising and Siege and Storm. I read the first book, I thought it was perfectly fine, but it didn't blow me away. I watched the first series of the Netflix show and really, really enjoyed it, and honestly, I think I'm going to continue with the TV series and not bother with that trilogy. So, I've given up on the specific trilogy, I haven't given up on the Grishaverse. I still do have Six of Crows and Cook of Kingdom, which I need to get to at some point, and I'm very excited to do so. Partly because in the TV series, the characters of the crows were my favorite characters, so I'm very excited to read those characters. Whether or not I enjoy that. Uh, duology will obviously then 
determine whether I read any further in the Grishaverse. But it, I haven't given up on the Grishaverse, but I have given up on the original trilogy. So, sorry. The next question is, who is a character that you th wish that an author would give more time to in a book or series? My answer to this question is actually Angua from the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett, specifically the Watch series, which is the first one is just sitting here. She doesn't really appear in this one. She appears in later books in that in the Watch series. Angua is a member of the City Watch. She is a werewolf. She is fantastic. I absolutely love her as a character and I just wish that there was more of her in the books. We definitely get some of her character and she plays a part in a lot of the books but I really would like to have more information about her and more books about her backstory particularly. Like I said it's not to say that her character is not given airtime to, she definitely is, but I just found her really fascinating and really enjoyed following her character so I would have liked more of her in The Watch Book by Terry Pratchett. <laughs> All right next question is who is a character that you wish that an author would have given less time to? So I'm going once again to potentially have you all hate me with this answer, but my answer is actually Ren from the Curse of Dark and Lonely trilogy. I'm sorry, but he was bland. He was boring. He was also incredibly selfish and self-righteous. And I know that it's supposed to be that he, in the later books, that he is trying to keep everybody safe, but actually he's kind of just being that typical machismo, oh, I have to fix everything. That's something that's always annoyed me about different characters and it really annoyed me about Ren. Plus I just found him really bland and really boring. I really don't know what the appeal was for Harper. I feel like because the book told her she was supposed to be falling for him, she fell for him. Again, I know this book is really beloved, so I'm really sorry if I've offended you in any way, but yeah. I found Ren boring and I kind of wish that either he was more interesting or there was less of him. The next question is a really difficult one and that is if you had to give up almost or all if you had to give up almost all of your books which books would you keep? I mean I know Elliot Brooks is a big book lover so I'm not sure why she wanted to torture us all with this particular question but anyway let's see what I can come up with. The first one is Anne of Green Gables. Um, I have this absolutely beautiful edition, which I will put a photo of up here because it's just there, like just there, but I'm in the middle of filming and I'm sat on the floor and you know how that goes. Um, but yeah, I would keep this particular edition of Anne of Green Gables. It is stunning. It is one of my favorite books of all time. Need I say more? I would keep this box set of The Lord of the Rings. For those of you that have been paying <laughs> close attention to my channel recently, you would know that I read the series uh, again recently. I actually read using three different books from a different set that we have because they're not in the box set and getting them out of the box set is a bit of a pain. But um, this is my box set that I bought myself, I don't know, like 20 years ago. So yeah, I would keep that box set of The Lord of the Rings. It also has The Hobbit in it, so that's technically four books. But I feel like, I mean, it doesn't count for one book, but I feel like it's okay because it's in a box. <laughs> I also have a bind up of all of Jane Austen's novels, which I actually don't have with me at the moment because I have taken it over to my grandmother's. And every time I go and visit her, I read her a bit of a book. So at the moment we're reading Emma. This particular bind up is a bind up that she and my grandfather gave me for my 17th birthday. So it has very sentimental value for me but also Jane Austen is one of my favourite authors. These are some of my favourite books so I would be keeping a copy of the books anyway but because I have this beautiful bind up it has the cover from the 1990s version of the miniseries from the ABC, sorry BBC I should say, and what made my grandparents buy that particular bind up with that particular cover is that we would always watch, <laughs> countless times we would watch the that adaptation and we all loved it so yeah they bought that in particular because of the <laughs> adaptation that we all love to watch. So I would definitely keep that bind up. And finally I would keep this copy of Good Omens by Neil Pratt 
Neil Pratchett, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. There's nothing in particular about this specific copy that I want to keep. It's the one that I own, but this is one of my favorite books of all time. I read it probably every couple of years. Um, so yeah, I definitely want a copy of this and this is the one I have. So this is the one I would keep. The next question is, what is the best bookish thing you've ever been given? I'm actually going to answer this question a little bit differently from what you probably would be anticipating. And I'm going to say this camera because my partner Rowan bought this camera for me specifically so that I could make booktube videos. So it in, it in and of itself is not bookish, but the reason that I have it is bookish because he knew that I loved booktube and he wanted me to have something I appreciated that would be good quality so he bought me this camera so thank you Rowan um, but yeah that's my answer to that question <laughs> next up we have the question what is books that somebody gave you that you wish that you could give right back so my answer to this question again I'm not very well prepared because I didn't go and grab it off my bookshelf but I will put an image of it up here but my answer to this question is crouching tiger hidden vampire i don't know who it's by but you can see here so again please don't take offense if you like this book obviously everyone has different tastes and opinions about things to be perfectly honest i haven't read this book so it could be very very good i don't know but it's not my usual genre. I'm not a huge romance reader at the best of times. The sort of paranormal romance that this appears to be is not my usual thing. So like I said, I haven't read it. I could turn out to really like it, but I suspect that it's not a book that I will particularly enjoy. And because of that, this book was actually bought for me by Rowan as a joke, um, sort of also as a punishment. A while ago, I... I can't remember what it was for, but he, oh, I think it was um, a challenge video and he was supposed to be, if I lost, he was going to think of a punishment for me. And then one day we were in a local, um, one of those like $2 shops and he saw that book for $2 and it just really looked like the kind of book that I would not enjoy. So he bought it so that he could have a punishment book to give me next time there was some kind of challenge and if I lost. So it's definitely a joke. It's not intended to be taken seriously. Like I said, if you like this kind of thing, then, you know, that's fantastic. I hope you continue to enjoy. Like I said, also, I could read it as a punishment and then end up loving it. So who knows? But that is a book that I wish that I could give right back, but I've never unhauled it because there's a very specific purpose behind it. And the final question for this tag is name a time in a book when a character was given something meaningful. So for this, I'm going back to the Lord of the Rings and I have two items that I think were really meaningful. In the Lord of the Rings, in the Fellowship of the Ring, there is a time when the Fellowship are in a elvish woodland and they are being given gifts by the Queen of the Wush of the woodland. So I can say any of those eight gifts, but the two in particular that I think were incredibly meaningful. First of all was the little light. Um, it was it was a little vial which had effectively starlight in it. It was given to Frodo and Galadriel said to Frodo that may it be a light in dark places and it then later is used by both Frodo and Sam in the very darkest of times and it provides both actual physical light but also hope and strength and the will to go on so that was really meaningful and then the other gift from that specific gift giving time that I want to talk about is the little box of dirt of soil with a little seed in it that Galadriel gave to Sam and the reason why this was incredibly meaningful is because Sam was a gardener and he loved to grow things but when and now I'm going to be spoiling Lord of the Rings, but when the everything's done and they go back to the Shire and a bunch of stuff has happened in the Shire, Sam goes around the Shire and he spreads the soil across areas where it was damaged and uh, where the land was damaged and it fixes the land. And then he plants the seed where 
this really important tree to him had been planted and had been uprooted. He plants the tree, the seed there, and it grows into one of the absolutely beautiful special trees of the Elvish land, Lothlorien, and he plants that one where the party tree is to be and yeah it's just really meaningful both because she recognizes what was important to Sam but also because it enables him to make something really important to him well again so yeah that's my answer to the final question I'm not 100% sure who has done this tag so I'm going to tag a couple of people if you've already done the tag or you're not interested in doing the tag then obviously ignore but the people I'm going to tag today are Ellie from Earl Grey Books because I pretty much always tag Ellie. I'm also going to tag Paige from Pages with Paige and I'm also going to tag Victoria from What Victoria Read. So I think that they would all have some really interesting things to talk about in this tag and I'd love to hear what they had to say. So, like I said, if you don't want to do those tags, please don't, but you guys are tagged. <laughs> also, like I said, all of the information for both the US Food Chal Charity, even, and also Food Bank, the charity here in Australia, are in listed in the description below so you can go ahead and give what you can to either or both of those charities if you would like to leave me a comment on anything that I talked about today any of my answers please do be kind I was certainly not meaning to offend anyone so I really hope that I didn't but if I did I do apologize please like I said be kind in your comments but yeah please leave me a comment if you have anything you'd like to talk about if you'd like to leave me a comment but you don't know what then leave me some food emoji because that is the charity that we're focusing on today all of my social media details are listed in the description below so if you'd like to go and follow me on any of those other platforms please feel free to do so Thank you so much for watching today. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.